So you got a great idea and you presented it to the powers that be, your pastor, the prophet or whatever. And they gave you the green light and said, may the Lord be with you. But God said no. <laughs> In this lesson entitled In the Eternal Kingdom, we're going to see what happened to David and what did God say and why. This is the Legacy Edition. Ladies and gentlemen, there are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click that link, get your notes, your Sunday School books, and your Bibles. For the Kojic Legacy Edition of the Sunday School is now in session. You better join me and you better let's go. Teaching the Word of God Sunday school is now in session. <laughs> yes, Sunday school is now in session, as says my grandson, little Jonathan Jones. Hello and welcome to another edition of a Sunday school lesson that's taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation and the Ministries Church of God in Christ, and we're located 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. Beloved, our zip code is 60620. Do me a favor as we move forward. If this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd like to welcome you to the Kojic Legacy Edition of the Sunday School. Please let me know, and I'd like to thank you for studying with us. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, that like button on there. And lastly, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell notification and click all so that YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Although he's late, he just finally uploaded another lesson. Just buried my daughter, my granddaughter, Lucinda or Melody's father on yesterday. And also we were voting and in the General Assembly, although I was virtual, we had to take care of the church of the national, the business of the national church. I won't prolong the time. One announcement today uh, is my pastoral anniversary five years. Yes, that would be Sunday. I'm inviting you. Let's get right to this lesson. So the question was, Bless you for this lesson, and we pray it will be done in Jesus' name. Let's get into this. We are in 2 Samuel 7, 4 through 16, 8, April 14th, 2020,000, or 2024. Let's see. <laughs> wow, 2020,000. Let's get into what we can talk about. Verses number 4 and 5, it says, And it came to pass that night. That the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Thou uh, shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Now, I have notes for this lesson. These notes are aged because this lesson was taught, I believe it was the year 2020. And so all I did was upgrade or update the lesson a little bit. But that's why it would not be in the normal form. But I did not want to teach this lesson without the notes. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. So remember, and I always speak to my TA and my elite people, or not mine, but those who attended, which is a great idea, Dr. Mark Ellis, uh, with the Sunday School of the uh, International Sunday School Department. Those two programs 
which will help to perfect your teaching skills. I always say when you're looking at scripture, there are some things that you want to look for. Timing, location, instructions, people, commitments, commandments, whatever. So the thing, the first thing we want to look at is the fact that the Bible says it came to pass. So we know that there would be a transitioning of time. In other words, whatever was going on, uh, either a verse or a few verses or a chapter ago, this is a different segment of time. Then he tells us when it took place that night, that same night, that very night, that what happened, the word of the Lord. Now, this is the word. Now, he doesn't tell us how the prophet received it. We do know that the word of the Lord always remember and capture and focus in the spelling of Lord, all cap, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which means the self-existent one. God exists because he exists. He told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. The word am means to exist. And he says, I am or I exist because I exist. So God is self-sufficient, uh, which means he supplies his own needs. Therefore, he never has a need. But if he had a need, he would supply his own need because he's self-sufficient. But because he is self-sufficient, he doesn't have a need. So he says, the word of the Lord came unto Nathan. Y'all remember who Nathan was? If you don't, I'm going to tell you. He was the prophet that gave the okay. He said, yeah, that's it, man. Great idea. Go ahead. Let's talk about that in a minute. Now, watch. I'm going to show you two goals because Nathan told David to go. And now God is telling Nathan to go, but go back. Yeah. Go back and tell. Now, throughout here, you will see that David would be called uh, my servant. He's the servant of the Lord. He says, tell him that you're not saying this. And I might repeat some of this. You're not saying this, but the Lord is the one that's referencing. Here is this question or statement. Shalt thou build me a house for me to be able to lay in, sleep in, or dwell in? And I need you to know. Ladies and gentlemen, that it would be highly impossible for man to build a house for God who built everything to live in. So David built his house and a place for the ark in 1 Chronicles 15 and 1, 2 Samuel 6 and 17. He failed at the first attempt to bring the ark of the covenant home because he wanted to bring it home. At that time, it was on foreign land. The enemies had it. 1 Chronicles 13, verses 1, 2 Samuel 6, verses 1 through 7. And David made the mistake of trying to get the ark home because he did not consult with the Lord first. 1 Chronicles 15 and 13. I know before you send me an email that it is not Chronicles. I understand that. That was a slip of tongue. It is Chronicles. All right. And David's second attempt to bring the ark home he was very successful, 2 Samuel 6, 12 through 17. At this time, the king is... So Daniel is sitting here relaxing and resting. And all of a sudden he thinks about, I'm sitting here in my house resting with cedar, but the house of God or the ark of God doesn't have a place. Now remember, 2 Samuel 7 and 1 mentions that God gave him rest from his enemies. So David sent the prophet Nathan and told him that he had a desire or sent for him to build a house. Now, I need you to understand that it had already been in the heart of David to build a house for the name of the Lord. That's 2 Chronicles 6 and 7. Nathan expressed to David of his own personal view 
Nathan said, this is a great idea and the Lord be with you. You got two parts right. Yes, it is a great idea. And yes, God would be with them. However, as a prophet, Nathan is only supposed to speak what God says for him to speak. I need prophets. Told him to go back. <laughs> the word of the Lord came unto. Notice he calls him my servant David, 1 Chronicles 10 and 14, because David placed him as a king. Even in 1 Samuel 16 and 1, verses 12 to 13, the Lord placed him as the king and then placed the fear of the nations on him, on the people for David. Now, he says, or I'm saying all good ideas are not God ideas. Now, point number three is God said that it was good that it was in David's heart. That's 1 Kings 8 and 18. Point number four, David wanted to build a house for the name of the Lord. 1 Kings 8, 17 through 18. Point number five is David wanted to build a house also for the ark of God. 2 Chronicles 6 and 7. But God said he shall not build a house for his name. First Chronicles 28 and 3. David could not build a house because he was a man of war. First Kings 5 and 3. First Chronicles 22 and 8, 28 and 3. That's a lot of scripture. Because he was a man of war, he shed blood. And be also because the city had not been yet secure. First Kings 5 and 3 which means David would have gone back into battle in the midst of trying to prepare a house for God. God don't want to kill his people in trying to build him a house. God will finance his kingdom and his building project from people within, from the government, ask Cyrus the king. I'm trying to make a very important point right here. It's time out for draining and killing and having people mortgage their house to build a house of God. God never did want that. But did you know that David was also the great grandson of Boaz and Ruth, the Moabites, Matthew 1, 5 and 6, which explains why Abram took Lot with him because Abram and Lot will ultimately come together in the name of David. Because when you find Abram, you will find a man by the name of Salmon. Yes. And he married Rahab. Mm. And then Rahab and him had Boaz. And then um, uh, Ruth comes from a guy named Lot. Y'all remember him? And the two of them came together. And that's when uh, that family. David also was a man after the heart of God. I'm just standing for a second. Then I'm going to move forward. That's 1 Samuel 13 and 14. And he was 30 years old when he began to reign as king. And then other things that took place. If you want that, just go ahead and read the notes. I'm going to move on because it was just that, just those two verses. Uh, I got to move to verses number six and seven. Whereas I have not dwelt. Now, this is God talking. He says, I. Oh, sorry, Lord. Let me uh, clear that. I. Right there. I have not dwelt in any house since the time I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even till this day. But look at what God said. He said he walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Now, actually, the tent and the tabernacle is the same thing because the tent is the skin and the tabernacle is the inside. But I'm going to keep on moving. He says, in all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? So God says, I didn't ask for a house. Thank you for the idea. 
but I didn't ask for a house. He says, I'm not dwelt in the house from the time that I established y'all and pulled you out of slavery and out of bondage from the Egyptian king and from the Egyptians. So the Lord says he never lived in the house, but he did walk with them in tabernacle. And the, the idea here is that Israel being in a tabernacle, a tabernacle was a temporary dwelling place for God or his presence. Because everywhere Israel went, they took the tabernacle with them and that would denote the presence of God. Yes. So the Lord said that his presence shall go with them. That's Exodus 33, 14 through 15. And the presence of the Lord had filled the tabernacle, but not the house. Exodus 40 and 35. He didn't fill their houses. He filled the tabernacle. He said he didn't walk or move. He, he didn't live, but he walked or moved with them in a tent or a tabernacle. His presence guided and protected them throughout their wandering. And you will find that in Exodus 40 and 36. So the tabernacle was a temporary dwelling place because it was a place that they would pack up and leave according to God. And you'll find some other instructions in Exodus, the 26th chapter. So God says, I, I, never, I never dwelt in one. And why now is it important for me to dwell? Because I'm going to tell y'all something. When we put God in a house, we box God in, and then he becomes part of what we want him to be. I'm going to leave that right there on the altar. Verses number eight and nine. Now, therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David. Notice he keeps calling him my servant. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Now, he uses a military term. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Another way of saying that, is to say the Lord of heaven's armies. He said, thus said the Lord of hosts, I, 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 I took you from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Not only that, I was with you with the sword of thy winters and cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men of the earth. Now, this is God talking. He says for Nathan to continue to tell my servant David what I did for him, what I did to him, and <laughs> what I did in spite of him. Therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, thus saith the Lord. In other words, this information is not coming from Nathan personally. The first bit of information for him to build came from Nathan. But God told Nathan, you go back and you tell him, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Because remember, David would be and, and is a man of war. He is a man who has military uh, uh, assignments or people or campaign or soldiers under him. God got the archangel. He got the seraphims. He's got the cherubim. He's got the messenger angels. He's got the worshiping angels. He has all of the angels are, the, are, are, are under him. He has the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth. He has everything. Everything in heaven is at the discretion of God. He is the Lord of hosts. David, you are Lord or head or leader of a small army, but I'm the head of of the whole entire earth. I am the head or the Lord of, of hosts. Now, how did David get to where he is? God said, I took you from the sheep coat. A sheep coat means abode or habitation. It is the abode of the shepherds or the flock. It's also a place called the pasture. So David had, a, as a shepherd boy, he was leading his father's sheep in 1 Samuel 17. Even though he was anointed king, he went back out there to tending to the sheep until it was his time. First Samuel 16 chapter. But God says he removed David from being uh, this shepherd boy to placing him over the people of God to be a ruler. Another word for ruler means uh, a leader and a captain. For those of you all who want to go ahead and download your notes, and I know I'm way behind. Just take your phone, put it on camera, not movie, put it on camera, point it at that object right there. You'll see an orange or yellow thing show up, hit that, and then it'll take it to where the notes are, type in that information, 
and continue to flow. So he said that my presence will be with him or was with him. Let's see what he says. And I was with you wherever you went. So the Lord said that he was with David wherever he went. David, the Bible said, behaved himself wisely, and the Lord was with him in 1 Samuel 18 and 14. After the Lord uh, uh, Samuel anointed David with the oil, the Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord was upon David. It came upon him from that time, 1 Samuel 16 and 13. And David had a rest because the Lord had cut off of his enemies around him. And so the Lord brought the fear of David upon all the nations, 1 Chronicles 14 and 17. Only a God can bring the fear of you from around you and from your neighbors. And the Lord God of hosts was with David, 2 Samuel 5 and 10. The Lord also preserved David wherever he went, 2 Samuel 8 and 6. The Edomites became David's servants because the Lord was with him. Come on, somebody. 2 Samuel 8 and 14. I need somebody to type. When the Lord is with me, he's the Lord of hosts. Now, verse 9, it begins the covenant of God. When God starts saying, I will, I will, this is known as the covenant of God. Verses 10 and 11 says, moreover, I, I will. You see that? This is called the covenant of God. It's, yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. It says, moreover, I will appoint, I will appoint a place for my people and Israel. Not only will I appoint, but watch this, I'm going to plant them that they may dwell, which means to live in a place of their own, and they will not be moved anymore. Neither shall the children of the wickedness afflict them anymore as they did formerly. And since the time that I commanded the judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he's going to make you a house. Isn't that something? So we go from David wanting to make God a house to God getting ready to make David a house, although it's a different type of house. So the King James says, I will appoint the reading should be, I have already, or I have appointed. Because the place that the Lord says that he will appoint is called the promised land. God made a... So King James says, I will uh, appoint. So God says, uh, I don't need a place to dwell, but my people do. I'm not going to let you build a house for me, but I will build a house for you. So the children of wickedness who moved Israel into slavery because of sin will not move them anymore. God will permanently place them there. Because Israel walked in disobedience, 
to the Lord. He commanded the judges to be over them. And the reason the judges came is because Israel left God. And the Bible said that God will be with the judge, helping him or, or her to judge the people of Israel and to punish them, but to bring them back to God. But David, you cannot build me a house, but I'm going to build you a house. Now that word house here really means a dynasty. Yes, a house, a dynasty. And that word house also means a kingdom, not a physical house. Because remember, David was already in his physical house. Verse 12 says, and when thy days be fulfilled, which means you're going to live for a while. And thou shalt sleep with thy father, which means you're going to die. Uh-huh. But you're going to die a good one. Because here he really uses a term sleep, which to fall asleep, not means he's, he's in other words, he's not going to die a brutal death. But to sleep with your father means he's going to go to the grave in peace. He says, I was set up. I, I, I. There's that covenant. I will set up thy seed after you, which shall proceed from your very bowels. They're going to come from you. He says, I will. Remember these covenants. These are the covenants of God when he says, I will hear. That's God's covenant. I will. I will set up thy seed. I will establish his kingdom. Uh-huh. He shall build a house for my name. And look at what God says. I will establish. So we see those three promises of God right here. I will set up thy seed after thee. I will establish his kingdom. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom. God says, I'm going to do this forever. And we do understand that that is referring to Jesus who was the son of Abraham. He's the son of David. According to Luke, the first chapter, David is going to be sitting on the throne of his father, David, forever, which we believe this is referring to the millennial kingdom. So God says and made a covenant. He says, I'm going to give you three will, I wills. In this verse, I will set up the seat, your seed after you. I will establish his kingdom and I will establish his, the throne of his kingdom forever. So the Lord assures David that he's going to die, but he's going to die in peace. But don't worry, I'm going to still take care of your family, your posterity, your seed, your offspring after you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a twofold purpose. He's referring to Solomon and he's referring to Jesus. So the seed of David is Solomon, who is the son of Beth Beth Bathsheba, 2 Chronicles 6, verses 1 and verses 10. But the seed is also Jesus, who is the son of the living God, who is the son of David. That's Matthew 22 and 42. And God will raise up Christ to sit on the throne of David, Acts 2 and 30. And the Lord God shall give unto Jesus the throne of his father David, which is the prophecy. That's Luke 1, 32. And he shall reign over the house of David forever. Luke 1, 33. I will establish his kingdom. Because God said he would establish the kingdom of Solomon forever if he contests or con if he be constant to do my commandments, King James, and my judgments, 1 Chronicles 28 and 7. This prophecy is also about Jesus, who is called the son of David as well, Psalm 89 and 4. He says, I will establish, which means to set up and to constitute. Yes. And it's interesting that God brought part of the Abrahamic covenant into this picture because But God is the one who makes covenants, who keeps covenants, and who causes covenants to come to pass. Let me close out this lesson and let's see what else I get. He said, well, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So God told Solomon that he must keep his commandments so that God can keep his in 1 Kings 6 and 12. And lastly, God will establish this throne forever. But this king would be Jesus 
who would be on that throne forever. Luke 1 and 32. He says, not only that, talking about the offspring of David, he says, but I will. There it is again. That's that covenant. I will be his father and he shall be my son. I will be. So the Lord said that he would be a father to the son of David. Now this is referring to Solomon in 1 Kings 6, 11 and 12. But this is also referring to Jesus in Matthew 3 and 17. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I will be to him a father referring to Jesus in Hebrews 1 and 5. It also referring to Solomon in 1 Chronicles 28 and 6. He will also be my son, referring to both Jesus and Solomon. Now, there is a uh, uh -oh, part two. I think I missed some things, but I'm going to keep on moving with the lesson. That's right, because it goes to 15 and 16. He says now, but I will chasten him if he does wrong. Now, the word chasten means to correct to punish and to reprove. Now, this would have to be speaking directly about Solomon because the Bible says that Jesus knew no sin, nor was there guile found in his mouth. That's 1 Peter 2 and 25. If Solomon committed iniquity, then God would use men to punish him. And throughout the... his enemies to punish his children and then God will destroy the enemies. God is not trying to destroy his children. He's only trying to punish them that they will come back. And also in 1 Chronicles 17 and 13 about the same lesson, God said that he would not take away his uh, uh, mercy away from him. Which means that when God is correcting, punishing and chastening him, he's doing it because he loves him but he will never take his mercy away from him. So God is not trying to kill him. He said, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it away from Saul when I put him away from before thee. I will not take my mercy away like I did Saul, 2 Samuel 7, 15 through 16. Mercy means the unfailing love, the steadfast love of God. He says it will never depart. It will never turn aside. It will never be removed. God's mercy can never be departed from him because he said I will establish his kingdom forever. So God's mercy can never be taken or removed. There will be some difficult times in the kingdom, but his mercy won't depart. As a matter of fact, Solomon sinned and God says, I'm going to rend the kingdom, but I'm not going to do it while you're alive for my servant David's sake. And also the kingdom did get split, but, but because of the mercy of God, he left a portion and he always kept a portion because of his servant David's sake, 1 King 11 and 36. Then he says, I took this away, this mercy from Saul. The Lord rent the kingdom from Saul and gave it to David, 1 Samuel 15 and 28. Saul rejected the Lord, and the Lord rejected him, 1 Samuel 15 and 26. And the Lord killed Saul, 1 Chronicles 10 and 13, because Saul inquired of a familiar spirit rather than inquiring of the Lord. And then the Lord put away King Saul from before David. Saul made attempts to kill David more than one. One of the times you'll find in 1 Samuel the 19th chapter. But he was not successful in killing David, for God was with him, 1 Samuel 18 and 28. Saul was afraid of David because he knew that the Lord was with him, 1 Samuel 18 and 12. And Saul and his three sons, his armor bearer, they all died because of and by the hand of God, 1 Samuel 31 and 6. So God removed his enemies. And David said, I'm going to write a song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. God, uh, David wrote a song 
of God, removing Saul from him. That's second Samuel 22 and one. And lastly, he says, and thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. That throne shall be established forever. Now, I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Lord made a promise to David concerning two major things in his life here. His house would be established forever and his kingdom would be established forever. And God never breaks his commandment. So David can rest assured that this is going to take place. His house, meaning his household, his family, and his dynasty. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, listen, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And if you're watching this today, Sunday, April 14th, it's my fifth year anniversary. I'm inviting all 40 some thousand of my friends to come and celebrate with me my anniversary as a pastor. If you're not able to make it, there are the ways that you can send your love token. Old folk used to say, send go. My friend, Pastor Stefan Stone, fine young man, fine speaker, fine pastor of the New Harvest uh, uh, Pentecostal Assemblies Church of God in Christ will be our guest speaker. I am looking for a word from the Lord. Those of you who dwell and live in Houston, next weekend I will be in Houston, Texas. All right. Lastly, this is your way of giving. If you want to sow into this ministry, if you're thankful for the Lord, to the Lord, for the content that we try to produce, we put a lot into what we do because we want to be biblically correct in our instruction and in our teaching. There are the ways that you can support this channel. Lastly, I had a session with a, a, a group of pastors, elders, ministers, and, and one lady was not maybe not in that field, but we allowed, she came in and we, we had a topic on two things. When Jesus said, uh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Was he talking about the cross? Oh, and when Isaiah 53 said, with the stripes we are healed, was he talking about physical healing only or spiritual healing only or both physical and spiritual? I might tell you what our results were. I'm getting ready to have a series of those possibly weekly or every other weekly or whatever, so that we ministers, men and women, can come together and open up the scripture because I have this saying, never teach what you've been told, never teach what you've heard, only teach what you've studied. I will talk about that later. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence and the model of the Sunday school, a child saved is a soul saved plus a life, amen. Make sure you like, subscribe to this channel, make sure you share, Make sure you leave comments. If the Lord said the same, if the creek don't rise, if the Lord delay is coming, and providing that I don't oversleep, I'll see you all for our live stream Sunday at 9 a.m. Peace. Thank you for joining the Sunday School lesson today with Dr. Rodney Jones. If you enjoy what you heard, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Thank you.